Greetings, students, and welcome to this edition of Mr. Zoller's Social Studies Podcast. Now, today, we are going to be talking about Confucius. Confucius was a philosopher who lived over 2,500 years ago in ancient China. Confucius is arguably one of the most influential philosophers who ever lived, and the teachings of Confucius, which are known as Confucianism, still impact China and really even the rest of the world today. All right, what did Confucius believe? Well, he was primarily concerned with relationships, human relationships, whether these be social relationships in between uh, different people or political relationships between rulers and their subjects. He thought that there was fundamentally a proper way that people should behave towards each other. So how does Confucius believe that people should treat each other? Well, he felt like everybody had their own role to play depending on the different types of relationships. And according to Confucius, there are five basic relationships in the world. One relationship is between a ruler and a subject, the relationship between a father and son, the relationship between a husband and a wife, the relationship between an older brother and a younger brother, and then the relationship between a friend. Now, Confucius didn't necessarily believe that all of these relationships were equal to each other. Um, but he did believe that every party kind of had their own responsibilities in the relationship. And Confucius would say that if all members of society uphold their duties, then society is going to be a lot more stable and more harmonious. Let me give you an example. Confucius would say an important relationship is that between the father and the son. Uh, a son is supposed to be loyal and obedient to the father. And that gives us the idea of filial piety, which is an important kind of social glue in ancient Chinese society. Filial piety means loyalty to the family and to the male head of the house. It dictates that the son is to follow the wishes and commands of his father. However, the father has responsibilities as well. The father is supposed to be fair and just and act in the best interest of the family. Another example would be the relationship between a ruler and a subject. A subject is supposed to be loyal and obey all the commands of the ruler. However, the ruler has the responsibility to rule justly and in the best interest of the people. A ruler was supposed to rule by setting a good example for others. If a ruler had to use his power and authority to keep people in line, then he obviously is not cut out to be a ruler. If a person is not fit to rule, then they would lose that authority which was given by heaven and the gods. Um, someone would come in and overthrow them, and a new ruler would be established. This idea is key to what uh, ch the Chinese refer to as the mandate of heaven. This is the authority to rule which is given by nature and the gods. So Confucius, who lived at the end of a period in Chinese history known as the Warring States period, was, this was a time of chaos and endless warfare between the many feudal states in China at the time. Without a doubt, the disorder and upheaval of this time period influenced the thinking of Confucius. Confucius wanted to restore the mandate of heaven because he believed that it would end the fighting and bring peace and stability to China. Now, Confucius attracted many followers who wished to study and learn from Confucius. The sayings and ideas of Confucius were collected by these disciples, and compiled in a book called the Analects. Through the study of the Analects, one can still learn about the philosophy of Confucius. Confucius taught about the importance of the family, about respect for one's elders, and reverence for one's past and for one's ancestors. He emphasized morality, justice, and orderly social relationships. These are the key ideas that we need to understand about the teachings of Confucius. Well, that's it for today's social studies podcast. I hope you have enjoyed it and keep studying the social studies.